Great. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 7th meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, this open meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely per the governor's extension of the remote meeting provisions of the executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting, the Redevelopment Board is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also be aware that you um, may not share imagery in your background while you are speaking. Anything that needs to be presented needs to be submitted in advance uh, to the redevelopment board. Uh, so let me go ahead and move to a roll call to ensure that all of the members of the board are present and can hear me, starting with Ken Lau. Ken? You're unmuted. Ken, can you hear me? Sorry, I had speaker on off. Oh, that's okay. Just we're just couldn't doing a roll call. Out, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Okay. Uh, Jean Benson. Present. Steve Barvalak. Good evening, Madam Chair. And Melissa Tentacolis. Present. And I am Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. We also have um, Jennifer Rape from the Department of Planning and Community Development. Present. And Kelly Lynham from the Department of Planning and Community Development. Present. All right, so uh, this evening we will move right into our first agenda item, which is finalizing the report to 2022 annual town meeting uh, based on the hearings and the deliberation that um, occurred over the last five meetings. And um, Jenny and Kelly have done an incredible job capturing all of the discussion uh, within 24 hours. Thank you so much to you and your team for pulling all of this together so quickly. And so I think what might be best, um, Jenny and Kelly, I know that several of us submitted um, revisions to you in advance. If you want to take us through how you have already worked to compile some of those revisions, and if it would be helpful to just go article by article, um, you know, however you'd like to take us through, it would be fantastic. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Rachel. And thank you to you and Jean and Steve for providing comments. Um, they're all merged into this document. Um, additionally, some uh, edits have been made by myself and Kelly, um, just sort of some clarifications mm -hmm. and some things that we saw that needed to be uh, changed. So I'm going to just go page by page because this is, a, this is the edits to the document that is posted with this agenda. So um, everything is in track changes except for commas. Apparently we missed a lot of commas, um, which is really unusual because I love the comma so much. So I'm sort of surprised by the number of times I missed it. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna walk you through the things that are, I thought, you know, important to share through track changes. So um, I did delete the comments because the comments were addressed. Um, but I'll walk through how we addressed those comments when we get there. And mostly I did that because it's just a lot to see on the screen. Um, and I didn't think that that was necessary for the substance of your conversation. So um, you can see the edits on this page. I think, let me know if you have, a, if you have anything else. Otherwise, I'm just going to roll through. Okay. That sounds great. I think maybe we'll pause. Um, once we get into the articles, we'll pause after each article for any uh, comments from the board members. <clears throat> um, one one quick thing here. Uh, the video for April 4th, is it on the YouTube already, Kelly? I do not know. I'll double check right now. Okay. Just so the, I didn't put it here because I'm not sure. Sometimes it's not immediately available. Um, so if it's not available by tomorrow morning, then we won't be able to put it here. But we maybe can put parenthetically that it will be available on the ACMI. YouTube page and maybe just have a link to that. Sounds good. Um, okay. Um, this is just the link to 
and a video, by the way, I just changed this and um, Steve's recommendation and you'll see it throughout is instead of action, favorable action. And then of course, no action remains the same. Um, okay, so article 28. Um, so with this one, we, we, we addressed the issues here about sort of what this really encourages. And this was a blend of three different commenters. <laughs> so, um, you know, we want to have more vibrant building facades and activated commercial uses that encourage public engagement. Um, and also make it clear that it's providing the board with some standards that you might apply as part of your environmental design review special permit proceedings. Um, a comment was made that it would it would be important to, well, it was actually in the tree one, but then I realized it probably was relevant here as well. So that the tree, the next one, I also clarified why every 25 feet, we'll get there in a second. But for this one, I thought, well, maybe it's also important to explain why we chose the footage that we did. Um, and that of course is sort of the same argument. It's they're very small storefronts um, in terms of like feet. So uh, we made that clear here um, and gave some examples. This was actually from the memo. I just thought it was relevant. So are there any of, and then, oh, um, Rachel had noted throughout that this was sort of like a fragmented vote sentence. So. I've made the change here, but in the rest of the document, it's already an accepted change because I didn't think you needed to see it 18 times. Um, so that's the change that was made. It just is one sentence now. And you can see that I moved favorable action here instead of just action. And so the same thing goes throughout. So any, any Team? I like that sentence, the wall facade articulation, but I wonder if it works better as a footnote there, but it's up to you. As a what? I'm sorry. I wonder if it works better as a footnote, but you can keep it where it is. Just that whole addition. I'm open to whatever the board wants to do with this addition. I, I don't mind it in there. I see what you're saying, Jean, just in terms of making it um, more concise. Um, what I like about it is, especially since this is specifically for the use of town meeting members, I think it helps them put in context what some of the, um, what this, what the dimensional standards really are, which um, I think is a good add because I, um, I know how hard it is sometimes for people to contextualize what um, what some of these dimensions are that we, who are used to talking about those sometimes pull together. Um, but, uh, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna wordsmith too much tonight, but I just feel like the second sentence starting while facade articulation, it's sort of like, but where did that come from? You would have expected to be somewhere sooner. So maybe you could flip the first sentence along to say, Facades along Arlington's commercial districts are substantially shorter than, you know, what? No, no, leave it. I, that's all right. I'm not going to mess with it. Sorry. I don't want to make everybody's job harder. There aren't other strong feelings about it. We can leave it there and we can go back if you want to look at, you know, do one more sweep through at the end. But do you want to move to the next one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I see what Jean is saying in terms of making that the first sentence and then having the rest, the rest of it does flow together. So I'd be fine with starting the, your, Jean, you're suggesting to start the paragraph with the text that Jenny added and then, correct, is if we keep well, it in the I, main. I, well, I thought the sentence would work better with, it said some of our facades along Arlington's commercial districts are substantially shorter than, you know, a minimum of 50 to 80 feet, which would be appropriate in the industrial district. So you just flip it. Because flip it. I see what you're really, saying. Got it. This is really about what <laughs> we're doing. You know. Yep, that makes sense. I agree with that. To start it with contextualizing it with the rest of it and then comparing it later than to the industrial, yeah. got it, that makes sense. Is that better?
Yeah, then you just have to change a minimum of 50 to 80 feet, which are appropriate, right, for the industrial district. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make much more sense. Yeah, okay. Yes. Great, good change. <laughs> okay. Anything else? On that? All right, I don't see any other hands. <clears throat> All right, so next is Article 29. Jenny, do you mind to just expand it a little bit so the margins are smaller so I could? Mm -mm. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Big, big, that's good. Yep. Good, all right, so. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was at 100, that's 150. Let me know if I need to make it bigger. Um, okay, so this was where the, request was made about why the 25 foot spacing. Does that address your comment, Jean? Thank That's you. from Mo. Yes. Um, and that was it here. Great, any, uh, any other comments on Article 29's discussion? Looks like we're good. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this one just, it looked like what happened here, uh, uh, Rachel had a comment that this was actually not the whole quote. The quote wasn't clear because the, the beginning of the quotes was not actually there. And then this is actually in the plan, but it's in the description of that priority. Um, so I moved it down here and I put quotation marks there. And then these are Jean's additions. Um, and I think particularly this one is important, which is about how the def not every definition in the new amendment relates to the amendment. Um, it's related to some of the other terms used elsewhere in the bylaw. That was a good catch. Thanks. Um, are we missing a, an end to the quotation? So in the area that starts the That's, net zero action plan? So oh, here, solar, yeah. PV, yeah, it must be, yeah. I think that's right. Is this the end of it, Kelly, in Arlington? And, Great. and also, technically, if you indent a paragraph as a quote, you don't have to have quotation marks around it. Yeah, well, I'm, I, I don't think we did it this way actually in another one. So I wanna make, I'm gonna go back for consistency because we did quote from another plan but it doesn't look like this. So I'm gonna go back. That's like a formatting thing we'll go back to yeah. tomorrow. Great. I just decided to leave it this way for the purpose of our discussion tonight. Great. Okay. Um, and the else? board, Sorry, go the, ahead. Oh, just one last thing was the board was obviously the ARB, but I think that probably wasn't clear because we were talking about something else mm -hmm. up there. Like it could have been the select board. Right. All right, any other um, comments or edits on this article. All right, looks like we can move to 31. Um, this one, there's some comments from Steve about the word quantum, which we changed to threat, uh, was changed to thresholds. And then I believe this is uh, Jean making it clear that it was about this is this is specific to our special permit, so that was really important to make it clear that it's not broadly in the bylaw about housing choice. It's specific to our role uh, granting special permits, um, and so of course it's 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 the law now too. Um, I think that was it. Any uh, comments on thirty <clears> one? <throat> All right, we can move on. Um, these are, uh, this just clarifies that. But so I only know, I don't know if the Zoning Board of Appeal, Appeals had a hearing to adopt their rules and regulations, but I wanted to make it clear that we we did, we and, um, maybe, and, and have, they have since been amended. Is it? Two or three times now that we've amended our rules. I just, that's enough. I don't think you have to count, right? Okay. 
Or, um, or I don't know about I don't know about the ZBA though. I don't know their the process they used. I think this was your comment, Gene. Mm -hmm. I'm Madam Chair. I just thought if we yes. knew that the uh, ZBA had a public hearing to when they adopt them, it would be worth putting it in there. Yep. But if we don't know, we can't do it. Steve but might have some Steve. relevant information. Yeah, Steve. Uh, just as, uh, to follow up on number of times, um, uh, may possibly adding the um, changing the last sentence in that paragraph to and and they have been amended multiple times. Any um, anything about the ZBA's process? I recall the ZBA having rules and regulations at the time I joined, um, although I was not, um, you know, not part of the adoption process. Okay, I think I think it's okay without that. My my own opinion. I think that's fine. I don't think we need to specify it. Yeah. And if there's a question, Christian will be there to answer it. All right, any other comments on 32? All right, 33. Okay, this one, um, Rachel pointed out that there was a little like, really, was it 2019? I thought it was 2021. Well, it was 2019 and it was also 2021 that we amended Half Story. So we amended it in 2019. Um, that was actually through uh, work with the residential study group. And then we amended it in last year um, because we had found an older reference to the pre-2019 definition in the bylaw. We did that through an administrative amendment. So, so you, need fix, you need to fix this sentence now. <clears throat> Please. Right, approve an administrative amendment. You don't need what's made, right? In there? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. Thirty-four. Oh, um, and then Rachel, you had a comment about do we need to mention that we changed the hatching right. in this? And no, it's not really part mm -hmm. of the bylaw. But I think that when we were talking about putting this in, we just wanted it in for you know to explain Reference that this is what we're talking about. Yeah. So. The, um, I, I didn't. I didn't necessarily think so. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't need to highlight it in some way. Okay. Yeah, the ha I was going to say the hatching exists in the current bylaw, so putting it back isn't really a change. It was just didn't come out that one time. <laughs> yeah, and this you, is just an illustration. So if we ever want to change any of the illustrations, we can do that without having town meeting vote on them. Oh, well, that's good to know. Yeah, so if there are other illustrations that you feel need a little work, please feel free to let us know. I think we have the ability to change them. Great. Between Kelly and Steve. Okay, to move on? Yes, let's go to 34, okay. thank you. So Porch. Um, okay, this is an amendment by Steve. Um, I, Sorry, I now I can't remember why you wanted to, to clarify this part. Oh yeah, so the um, the sentence that was struck in recent years, the ZBA has approved these projections with a condition. I think that relates more to the next article, um, which alters um, projections into minimum yards. This one I th felt was more about including porch in the list of things that were projections. Okay. That, that was basically the motivation. But you didn't want this to be moved to the next article, or did you? Uh, no. Okay. I, I think the other, the other, uh, the discussion for the other article was fine. So you need to put the word and after the 5.3.9a, right? And we'll provide clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion on 34? 
move on to 35. This is pretty straightforward. Um, I, I just wondered that sentence that starts with currently, is that actually currently how it works? Steve? That is currently how it works. Oh, you know, Jenny. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Yes, we do. Know. Yep. Sorry, okay. I forgot. I deleted that comment as well. But yeah, you, the question was, do applicants proposing, you know, are allowed to do so by right not needing a special permit? Okay. Thanks. Any other discussion? All right, let's move on to 36. Similarly, some light edits here by all of you. This look good to me. Any other comments or uh, discussion? All right, let's move on to 37. Um, this is just, uh, we missed the designee piece and just making it clear it was multiple decisions. Um, third party is hired by the owner, obviously not the town. Um, that was it. Any other comments or discussion? All right, let's move to 38. Steve requested um, making it clear that this is the Fair Housing Action Plan, this quote. But this is how I did this quote. So yeah, I'm gonna go back to the other one and it'll look like this, by the way. <laughs> this is the direct quote from a plan. So I'll make sure that it looks, the net zero action plan one from earlier from the solar bylaw will have the same citation and the page number. Great. Um, and then th this one obviously had a lot. So I'll go through um, mostly just how we worded the you know, two um, opposing votes and the three supportive votes. So. Um, I'll let you read. I'll make it bigger. The last sentence notes needs to be noted. Because all the others are past tense. The board for the notes, right? Great. Thank you for adding that. I thought that um, the, the um, response that was really succinct that, Gene, I don't remember whether that was you or, or Ken gave. Ken, um, it was Ken's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, whoever no, it, it was, also, it was, it so was really Jean helpful. And I think it also Jean talked about the, yeah. the word that should be the. It says the board also noted the amendment, not that amendment. No previous oh, yeah. slide. Right. Left hand. This one? Left hand margin of the previous line. The word that should be the, right. Oh, yeah. The amendment. It's also there. Um, uh, sorry, can I just- Sorry, um, I was, we were all talking about- Yeah, Go I just ahead. had one wording that I, um, in that last sentence where it said, um, would not increase parking, be demanding on the town's water or sewer infrastructure? Should we say, um, 
I think the point, Jean, that you were making was that it wouldn't overly tax or it, it, it wouldn't it would significantly not, increase well, demand, it right? It wouldn't exceed the capacity of the town's water and sewer infrastructure. Yes. Yes. To me, that those are statements that are kind of subjective and not objective. And these statements seem to me that they're very objective statements when they're just subjective to those three board members. But they're not, I mean, Jean's, Jean's citing the, um, the director of public works and they're, they're not subjective. Not all of those things. That was just infrastructure. No, so this, he, I mean, he was asked about the water and source. And the parking. I'm just curious. I'm just, because it just seems to me that part of what the issue was that there wasn't any study on it. The parking doesn't increase so. Right. So there is no question about it increasing or decreasing. It's just we're leaving it the same. So, that, so we, we didn't address that. Right, the same with open space. It doesn't, um, all of the same open space requirements remain the same. So the only thing that we're addressing is the infrastructure. Right. Well, and you know, I'm sorry. It, we've got two concepts in the last sentence. And one, you know, and maybe what we should do, the board, the previous sentence, the dimensional requirements will remain the same. And I think what we want to say is something like, and there's no change in the parking or open space requirements. And then the last sentence could be the board further noted, noted the amendment would not exceed the capacity of the, we don't need the parking because that was above. Oops, where'd that go? You don't need the parking because we put it in the previous sentence and you don't need the open space because we put it in the previous mm -hmm. sentence. So the set, that sentence would then just be the capacity and value of people's homes. I think that makes more true to the intention. Right. That was stated tonight. Yep. Steve, you had your hand up. Did you have um, a further edit on this paragraph? No, uh, Mr. Benson. I think um, uh, beat me to beat me to the punch. I I was going to suggest focusing on dimensional, the fact that none of the dimensional requirements are changing first, and then move on to uh, the other things, water and sewer, and so on. Um, Jean or Steve, would either of you like to add again, because this is reflecting the conversation, I think, and the points that you and 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 um, Ken made, would you like to add any reference to the um, to the director of um, public works? Because Steve, I know that some of this is based on a conversation that you specifically had with him and and shared with the board. Is that something that you think you would like to add to this? Um, so you, you, how, a, well, off the top of my head, um, so the last, set, the last two lines of that paragraph, uh, the board further noted the amendment would not exceed the capacity of the town's water or sewer infrastructure. Um, parenthesis per correspondence with the director of public works close paren yeah that looks good okay uh any other comments before moving on to the next paragraph. All right. Let me know if it's easier to read these sentences with just accepting the deletion, because there's a lot 
going on there. I think um, member in the second where you have lastly, um, restruck lastly, it should be members supporting, I believe. And I don't know that that was, so because of the way that this is edited, I think this was all of our, those of us who supported and did not support felt this way. I don't know that it's just members supporting the amendment felt that there was a lack of accurate information and unfounded statements, um, et cetera. So if this is, I'm fine with eliminating, um, or clarifying that this is board members felt. Again, I don't think that this was just, this was specific to the members supporting the amendment. And if Melissa feels differently, I would want to move this to the paragraph that talks about the discussion of the members supporting the amendment. But I, I believe that it was all of us felt that there was a lot. Part of our, Melissa, my concern is the fact that there is so much misinformation and concern and there hasn't been a public, um, significant public outreach. So. Um, Either this could um, align with what Melissa and I in our no vote had discussed, or it could be the overall sentiment of the board in general. So I'm open to discussion on that, um, but I don't think it was the specific to the those who were supporting the amendment. I, I'm troubled by the phrase perpetuated by opponents of the article. I think that's unnecessarily inflammatory. Um, and I suggest you could say all board members express concern about the lack of accurate information about the amendment and the need for more a more ro robust data-driven. And I'd leave out the whole and in fact, yeah, I just think that's unnecessarily inflammatory. Can we identify that the lack of accurate information, I want to make sure that it's um, not construed that that's from the petitioner. Yeah, and that it's part of the public discourse. So if we can find a better way to identify that it's um, so why don't we say discourse, lack of I'm fine with that change. Why don't we say lack of accurate information in the public discourse? That's fine with me. And get rid of about the amendment. We don't need that because that's what this is about in the public discourse. So again, um, I think this last sentence is part of what Melissa and I had indicated was part of our lack of support of moving this article forward. So again, the question is, do we want to say that this is all board members or that's why the word lastly was in there, I think, because it was a continuation of the points that we were making as to why Melissa and I um, were not able to support the article. So I, I, I don't know who struck the lastly, but I, and um, I think that's this, this hey. last sentence. <laughs> Apparently I did. Okay. Um, so, but um, if you are all in agreement now about that perspective, then maybe it's worth noting in a second sentence that this lack of information that, you know, the, the, the two board members who opposed, opposed to the amendment felt very at, so strongly about these concerns that that, you know, led to voting no or something. I don't know, you I'm not coming up with the words as well as I want to. Yeah, I think that's an important point, Jenny, because while we all were concerned about the lack of accurate information in the public discourse, I think uh, Rebecca and Melissa, that might have been a factor that 
sort of led them to vote no. Well, I had that concern too, but I it didn't sway my decision to vote no. I think that's fair. I think that sentence needs to be rearranged. Somebody can try to do that if they want to. Yeah, I just say this. This is one of the factors for the right. right. Was a or a? This was a consideration. A yeah, a yeah. consideration, a factor, and remove strong. I would agree. Right. Yep. That's this a yeah, this factor was a consideration. <clears throat> and um, should the last word in that sentence be amendment or article? Article, right. Thank you, Steve. And in fact, two, two lines up, we need article two, right? And up near the top, there's amendment should be article. So we have to sort of go back and catch them all. It's in the first. No, no, not, not, no, no, that, that amendment needs to stay because that should be a suite of comprehensive and connected amendments. But the first line of the paragraph <clears throat> should be article. I think this one is okay as amendment. But do you want to change that to article as well? Because this is also art of this one is the amendment of the article, right? And you want those add, all to be article? Then there's one more amendment to change the article too, but yeah. These four yeah. change. Yeah. Okay. The last uh, sentence or two of this um, discussion is sort of like um, maybe redundant now. So I'd like us to take a look at that when I'm done copying and pasting. Um, this one, which basically summarizes what we said before. Well, you could say in summary, the amendment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the article. The article, right, in summary. <laughs> article. Okay. Maybe it should say does not change rather than maintains yep. here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four. So another amendment needs to be changed to article. Yeah. And just to confirm, I know we spent a lot of time on the last couple paragraphs. I just, um, it, it's been a minute now since I read this. We talked about Jean's um, change to restrict the size in the opening, correct? No, actually, I, I don't think we talked about it here. So, um... I think we should add something about that. Oh, it just says expressed interest in limiting the size, but we should probably be more clear about that. Jean, is there any wording that you'd like to add there? I 
think it was an important change and um, just want to make sure that it's clearly articulated. I mean, I, I thought that sentence did it. That's fine. You think that's enough, not without right. saying anything more? Right. I, I think it needs a little refinement. Um, so in limiting, limiting the size of new units, specifically, we're talking about two family and duplex units uh, because we can't limit the size of single family um, to include the square footage. So um, I would add limiting the size of new two family and duplex units. Using zoning bylaw language here. Hope you mm -hmm. don't mind. Oh, dwellings. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, to include the square footage limit of starter, to include the 1,850 square foot limit of a starter home. Yeah, okay. I, that, yeah. I think that's it. Dean, does that work for you? That's fine. Except. I think we have to say two family and dwell, duplex dwelling units because we're not limiting the whole thing. We're just limiting the unit. Yeah. Yep. Any other um, additions or um, changes? I'm um, sorry. It just it says limit limit. <laughs> So oh. just um, so how about to include the 1850 square foot um, to include a maximum of 1800 square feet, maybe something like that. We had to work each. Well, why, why don't we say this? The three board members in favor of the article chose to limit to 1850s the chose to limit the size of new duplex and dwelling units to- I'm gonna say the maximum size. I think this is important because I've heard a lot of discussion right. that makes it seem like it will immediately be that right. size. The maximum size to, and then get rid of include the, right? Gene, do we need to word each? Gene, that amendment, is only if you build the two units, right? So they can still build the set, the big McMansion. Yes, they can still build the big McMansion or a small McMansion. Is McMansion written in here anywhere? No, I don't think. I so. think you should put it in there because that was part of the discussion a lot. Well, I don't like the word McMansion. I don't either, but it was used a lot in that discussion. Well, but maybe what we should do to get close to it is, well, let's look at this sentence first, right? Three board members in favor. The article chose to limit the maximum size of new units to 18 tons per feet in the starter home that aligns. Okay. So then we have um, well, we do have those two size limited unit should sell for less than one larger house. So there, it shouldn't it be um, to 1850 square feet, which aligns with um, the definition of starter home in 760 CMR 59.00. So Gene, you don't think we need the word each after the square footage? Square foot each. I think we do. I think that's a good call. Uh, yep, yep, yep. I'm impressed you can still read the sentence with all the cross outs and different colors. I do a lot of editing. <laughs> Okay, that's better, I think. Okay, great. 
I'll, I'll go back up to the top. You do one more read through. Mm -hmm. How about that? Sounds good. So Melissa, I think that sentence where it talks about um, the minimum lot sizes and single family use di districts ensure that only large high cost housing can be built in those locations gets to that point you were making about that being part of the discussion. I don't know if you wanted to emphasize that anymore here, but um, I think that first sentence or that first paragraph is where it references it. But yeah, that was that a call out because that was a big part of the discussion. Yeah, I mean, I think that's where people are coming from. I mean, I guess for them to see that language captured in the discussion to me makes sense. Keep going. Yep. Madam Chair, um, may I propose, uh, so in the line, in the one, two, three, four, fifth line on the screen, the 800, so we have 1,850 square feet each. May I propose a comma after each? Thank you. Sure. I, the other thing we might want to do is, is where the sentence starts members, we might want to make that a new paragraph. <laughs> I think the only thing I don't see that was captured was a little bit more my concern about, you know, diversity, because I think I felt like I addressed the issue of segregation historically. And I think what I was thinking about was also socioeconomic diversity. And I think I said that. You did. If um, if you want to put that in here, I would like to be able to find in the Fair Housing Action Plan where it talks about how actually home ownership is a gateway to more diversity in our community. Um, so I, I would want to make sure that I have that reference. But I, I do recall you saying that, Melissa. Melissa, where would you propose adding that? Um. I mean, I guess I did. I just thought after the two board members, I think. Um, we could maybe put it at the, yeah, at the end of that paragraph before we get into the all board members. Uh -huh. if that works for you. Uh -huh. Just because we're, you know, the, the, the conversation was, I mean, we talked about options and then we talked a little bit about starter homes, but you know, I feel like that is still important to reference because it 
especially as we open this with a fair housing plan and talk about the segregation. I don't feel like that. I want that to be lost in our conversation because we, we brought it up. Yeah, so do, do you have a proposed sentence that could be a lead into Jenny's excerpt from the fair housing plan? I honestly feel like it's in conflict with the fair housing action plan is what I'm trying to say, perhaps. Oh, I see. Um, which perhaps I should have tried to resolve that prior to this evening, but um, I'm sorry that I did not have a chance to, but it is in conflict with that statement. Um, Jenny, you're gonna have to help me walk me through that because I'm, I'm getting lost. The statement that you're making about diversity, the Fair Housing Action Plan found that the number of um, BIPOC families are able to purchase homes in Arlington. That's actually in the Fair Housing Action Plan. Not saying it as eloquently, but if I can find that section, I won't be able to do it while I'm on the screen. Is Kelly? Kelly, are you here? Yeah, you're there. Yeah, um, <laughs> Sorry, I moved all my my faces no. around. Um, could you That's take okay. a, could you go look for that? Yeah, I have a sentence here um, just about in the United States, homeownership is a primary mechanism for households to build wealth. Is that where you're, um, and this is a lack of access to homeownership opportunities for persons of color is one of the many factors that can perpetuate economic inequality. Is that, that's not the section, okay. No, it's specific to Arlington data. And um, so let me, um, um, we, we could switch. Yeah, that's if, fine. I mean, we don't have to put that. I mean, we had to put it in, but like it doesn't have to be this moment. What I'm trying to say is that I would, the, my, my personal, my professional opinion is that your statement is in conflict with facts that are in the Fair Housing Action Plan. We've used the Fair Housing Action Plan as actually an introduction as to why um, this article has actually emerged from the Fair Housing Action Plan, not the housing plan, it came from the Fair Housing Action Plan. It was merged into the housing plan um, subsequently. But that, and this statement here is saying that single family districts have been a mechanism to promote segregation historically. But in Arlington, actually, there's a finding in our Fair Housing Action Plan also that talks about diversity in relationship to home ownership. So two, two slightly different pieces, Melissa. I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't go into greater depth with everything, but, um, and I'm not able to flip my screen. <laughs> um, is this? Well, you don't have to necessarily, even if it's in, incongruent. I mean, it's my statement during the discussion, which I'm just trying to allude to. So, I mean, it might not be inc like aligned with all the plans and studies, but I mean, I think part of my thinking and part of what I shared in, during the discussion was that diversity in terms of, you know, racial diversity is one thing. And then I was trying to talk about socioeconomic diversity. In, in, or in, are, are you talking about, I mean, so maybe I'm talking about two different things or I'm just trying to say, I wanted to include that, that I, I said. I'm, I, I'm not clear as to what specifically related to socioeconomic diversity you're looking to so, include. We need, okay. we kind of need a statement to, be able to. Okay. I'll, I'll just go back to what, um, I guess the recording, because I'm not remembering right now and I don't know exactly where things are getting tripped up. Can I ask a question? Sure, Ken. The reason why you want to make the statement, Melissa, is that's the reason why you're voting against this? Or is this, a, this is a topic you just wanted to bring up? I'm a little confused. As part of my thinking. Part of my against thing, yeah. against it, or my you're thinking against why you voted against this, or voting? Yeah, like I'm. I'm trying to think not only because we're we're making a land use change, and during that discussion, and a lot of focus was on diversity, and maybe I think what was happening in my mind, at least at the time, I think I feel like people were talking about ethnic racial diversity, 
And what I was trying to also say that is like what we're doing is not necessarily creating different economic options for people. And I was thinking of diversity in terms of racial economic variety, people who earn less, people who earn more. And I know historically disadvantaged, you know, groups have been, it's been difficult to buy a single family home, but that's at different <clears throat> price points anyway. Um, I'm saying that this just keeps, and my thinking was that this keeps things at, you know, 900 to a million dollars plus still in terms of socioeconomics based on your income levels alone, let alone your racial or your ethnic background, it still limits people and it doesn't create as many options to me. Now, is that right. founded so, in total research? I don't know. So can I propose then a statement? So can I um, propose a statement that, um, you know, Melissa Tintakalis um, also um, expressed a concern that this article um, did not address, did not adequately address um, the, the, the um, affordability, uh, did not adequately address um, aff affordability or um, for, you different know, income, in, for different income, for different income, income levels, levels for diverse in income creating levels. housing in, yeah. in, in, in creating additional housing choice. Yeah, for I would say for diverse income levels like that. Do you type that, Rachel, or is that handwritten? Can you reread it so I can type that? No, I just bumbled through that out loud. I don't have that written down. I've got it. So. I've got it. Hang on. Hang on. Hey, Kelly. Um, Tintakalis also expressed a concern. that this article did not adequately address affordability for different income levels in creating additional choice. Housing choice, yeah. But didn't they state that, that this article doesn't address that at all? They, they did, and Melissa saying that the fact that this article doesn't is part of, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what I'm hearing is you're saying that the fact that they didn't, even though they said that wasn't what the article was for, was a factor to you not supporting it. Correct. Because we're saying it's supposed to be I don't. Helpful. I don't want to debate it now. <laughs> I just, I, I want to be clear okay. as to what you're saying that, is, that we're that capturing. That is clear. Okay. That is clear. Okay. All right. Okay, one, one little thing that I just want to make sure I, I also included another edit here is that there was a point made about the real estate transfer fee it would be nice to have in place to generate funding because it sort of relates to that point now, this new sentence. But I put in here in a footnote to make it clear that, um, and as an update, if you're interested, um, town, town meeting passed a home rule petition in 2021 to allow Arlington to, uh, to establish a real estate transfer fee for property in Arlington. The bill was actually filed, had a hearing, and was reported out favorably uh, last month and referred to another committee. So I don't know that that will mean it will have success. Um, it also, if it's passed, it actually still has to go through a ballot um, you know, question process, but I just wanted to make it clear that that was something that the town had in you know, progress. In works. In progress. Okay, that's good update. Thank you. All right, any other edits for Article 38 before we move on? All right, let's move on to Article 39. Okay, so on this one, um, the addition here is that we confirmed with town council that this also meets the simple majority vote. <clears throat> I, we had noted actually in the staff memo that the prior um, amendment or article might have actually met the simple majority vote, but that we clarified that that is not the case. And that is because two family is not does not meet the definition, or even though it's increasing housing potentially, 
um, it does not meet the rule of multifamily as defined in housing choice, which is three or more units. So it does not meet the um, what would meet the this threshold requirement to lower it to a simple majority from the two thirds supermajority. But this article does. Um, so I just wanted to make that clarification this evening. Great. Thank so, you, Judy. You're welcome. Um, and so with this one, I think we added um, a couple of things that very minor overall. <clears throat> That's it, actually. Great. Any um, other additions or corrections for this discussion? All right, let's move on to 40. And when we when you vote no action, we don't include the motion or any of the material. Um, so there's two no action votes here. And so this is one of them. And the, the article 45 also had a no action vote. So we don't include the main motion or any material provided by the petitioner, which is why it's not here. There was a comment as to why we wouldn't include the map. Um, I'd be happy to include a map if you want to, but that is why it is not here any longer. I mean, these are just the minor amendments. Any other additions or corrections? All right, let's move on to 41. Okay, this is uh, also a uh, simple majority vote. And um, this one, we were asked to include those research a little bit uh, to add the research um, information in here, which was in the memo, but this is just sort of the consolidated version, which is the research that indicated that we have an excess of parking spaces at uh, many existing apartment buildings. Um, and then uh, Jean added a note here to make it cl as clear as possible that we have not, we're not amending the parking requirement for public housing. That is what it is right now. So this, you know, I think, I don't know if it's worth going back. Is the whole thing now mixes up article and amendment from one part? Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to basically go through and figure, figure out. out yeah, yeah. Right. I'm not going to be able to do that while we're looking I, through no, this. No, no, I sorry. understand. Just point yeah, out. no, I'm aware. I, after that other exercise, I, <laughs> I need to go through and figure it out. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Any other changes? All right, let's move to Article 42. Oh, sorry, one other thing that I've changed is um, some of these had like sort of a redundancy where we had kept language that was actually from the petitioner. So what I've done is I basically put it into like a, a added a row to a table to just say, this is the section of the bylaw because this is just sort of, you know, ended up being repetitive. Um, for this one, I actually, okay, this is all that was added. Um, I just, uh, right before this, I was at an Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture meeting and they voted unanimously to support this article. Um, would it be okay with you for me to add that language here or do you just want them to, um, they also said they would like to speak at town meeting, which of course is up to them. Two of the members of that commission are town meeting members, but, um, I, if you are interested, we could add that to this. They also benefited, as you know, Rachel, from um, the ability to do, it says right here, right. The, you know, the, the role of the Commission for Arts and Culture. Right. We do- We didn't talk about it, did we? No, I'm, I'm concerned about adding that because there, we also had, for example, um, the Zoning Bylaw Working Group gave us um, an email with, their support and non-support for certain articles, and we haven't included that. So, yeah, to point, we didn't discuss it, and um, right, you know, we're not including other bodies that express support or non-support for these articles. Yeah, that was um, 
And that, that that was from the master plan implementation committee. They and they did not have a chance to review everything, and they'll provide a report to town meeting where they can do that. So ACAC will probably do the same thing. I just wanted to make sure I communicated that to all of you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. And you know, perhaps in the future we can um, more specifically mention that um, when we have specific town working groups and committees. But since we didn't, um, we probably shouldn't include it. All right, any other additions or corrections for this article? All right, let's move on to 43. Just this little amendment again, um, it just was repetitive. Yep. Any other additions or corrections? Let's move to 44. Again, a uh, couple of additions here and that was it. Any other additions or corrections? All right, uh, so the last one is All right, any other additions or corrections for 45? All right, that is everything. Thank you so much for capturing all of that, Jenny and Kelly. Um, so at this point, um, our next step would be to uh, vote to um, approve the memo to be submitted uh, to town meeting. Jenny, is there any other um, the memo as amended. Jenny, is there any other um, stipulation you need within that vote? I need this to be these words. <laughs> All right, is there a motion to um, approve the report as Amended. Um, is there a motion to approve the? Um, what, what are we specifically? What do we have as the title? This is the report. Your amendment? your report to annual town meeting. Yeah, okay. I'll move to. Um, I'll move to. Uh, what is it? Approve the uh, Arlington Board uh, Arlington Redevelopment Board's report to town meeting um, for April twenty twenty two. As amended? As amended tonight. Great, thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right, we'll take a vote. Ken? Yes. Dean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. That is approved. Thank you all for your edits and uh, Kelly and Jenny for keeping track of all of that. Um, so, while we are still in agenda item number one, we um, won't be able to open agenda item two until nine o'clock. Um, while we're talking about town meeting, I just wanted to um, note that um, typically, so Jenny, did you have an update first of all on whether this will be in person versus, um, versus virtual or nothing official yet? Nothing official has been announced yet. Okay, so if this is um, in person, um, we would, uh, so our meeting will be in person as we know um, the night of the 25th before town meeting. Um, if this is in person, we like all the members of the board to attend on night one and um, it's up to members of the board as to whether or not you attend the other 
um, evenings when the zoning articles are up, um, I will be in attendance as will Jenny um, at a minimum. If it is virtual, the um, attendees are more limited. And so we would just need to know in advance as to whether or not you would want to attend. Um, during 2021 town meeting, Jenny and I attended each night um, and then Jean attended um, because we had so many articles of it was gracious enough to cover the ARB perspective on several of them. So, um, you know, we can certainly work, work that through um, if you, there are specific articles that, um, you know, you would like to, to take point on, I would certainly welcome that. Um, so we can certainly talk through that and you are, um, it would be great if you could reach out to me specifically and we can, we can talk through that. I'd certainly love to have some additional voices. Jean. Yeah, this, this is about our meeting, I think on the 19th, that was okay. intended to be in person. 25th. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. 20, whatever it was. Yeah. However, if town meeting is the same night and it's virtual, it'll be difficult to get from an in-person meeting back home to a computer. So I think that if town meeting is virtual, it would be better to switch our meeting on the same night to virtual. Yeah, I think that's a, a good point. Jenny, do you, I know we're just basically waiting to, to hear um, Jenny, I don't know if you have any perspective on that. I was going, I figured we would switch. Yeah. You know, if we're in person, then we'll be in person. If we're gonna, you know, be virtual, then you we would switch it. I just have to know before posting the agenda. It is a public hearing with a notice um that evening. Um Steve, this is hand raised. I don't know. He has an update. Steve. Yeah, so I was looking at the select board's agenda for Monday and one of their one of their agenda items is discussion and potential vote authorization of virtual town meeting. Mm, so, okay. so um, we should know next week. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that, that, yeah, I thought it was going to be this week. I had hopes for that, um, which we talked about on Monday night, but um, I don't have an answer right now. And I think the conclusion is that the select board, as Steve noted, is going to discuss it. And so we'll know that night. Great. So that'll be far enough in advance that we can post um, the whether our meeting on the 25th will be virtual or in person. It's a good yes, point. we'll change it if we have to. Great. Um, Jenny, any other uh, logistical items we should bring up relative to town meeting? That's really the only one that I had on my list. Um, I think the only other thing would be that um, you know there's been a little bit of well there was a lot of excitement sharing the solar um, the solar bylaw uh, potential amendments with the clean energy future committee and I think similar to how we did the article presentation on uh, from last year we might want to engage uh, members of that committee to join us in a presentation especially if it's so if it's virtual then we're uh, we're going to need to record videos um, we'll have I don't, there won't be a virtual presentation, it's a video presentation. So um, maybe in consultation with Jean, we can follow up on that if that would be okay with you, Rachel. That makes sense. And Jean, that might be one where, again, if we record the video, um, I typically just bang through all the recordings with, with Jenny, but um, that might be one where I would welcome you as the representative from the redevelopment board since you've worked so closely on that article rather than myself building questions that, that evening. And, and I don't know if Jenny, you were suggesting that maybe a member of the Clean Energy Future Committee do the actual video or do you want? I, I, I think that could be possible. They're very short, you know, so having multiple yeah. people speak is not always easy. I think, I think we did that with an article last year and it just, you know, you have three minutes basically for each person. Think, I, I, I mean, maybe ask Shelly. I think if she'd be willing to do it. Okay. The alternative is, or it doesn't have to be an alternative. Okay. It could be, and we could have, uh, ask her to speak at town meeting. And since you and Steve are town meeting members, you could use some time <clears throat> and give it to one of them to speak if they're not town meeting members. Great. Any In other? Part. I'll follow up with you, by the way, and I, I will follow up with the entire board when I have information, as I um, noted previously. Great. 
Great, thanks, Jenny. Um, any other questions related to um, town meeting before we uh, move on from agenda item number one? Okay, um, so we have about uh, 13 minutes until we can open the public hearing for agenda item number two. Um, we could take open forum out of order and uh, do that now. So um, if we have thumbs up from the rest of the board members, I think I'd like to go ahead and do that. Thumbs up all around. Okay. So at this time, uh, we'd like to move to agenda item number three, which is open forum. Uh, so any member of the public uh, wishing to speak, what I'd ask that you do is please use the raise hand function and uh, we will uh, allot you up to three minutes to, uh, to speak with the board. Give it another couple seconds. All right, seeing no hands raised, we will close open forum. Um, and so that, since that is the only other item on our agenda, what I'd like to do is um, see if there's a motion to, um, to um, pause our, our meeting and to re-adjourn at 9 p.m. for agenda item number two, the Warren Article Public Hearings for 2022 Special Town Meeting. So is there a motion to, um, yes, Steve. So, uh, Madam Chair, I move that we adjourn until nine o'clock and then resume with um, with hearings for the special town meeting warrant articles. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Great. We'll take a vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Uh, Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So we'll all pause and we'll see you uh, at nine o'clock. Uh, so it is nine o'clock. And we are um, going to go ahead and move into agenda item number two. I'll just give um, a minute or two before we um, before we move into that agenda item for Ken and Jenny to um, return to the screen. I'm back. You're back. Fantastic. And there is Jenny as well. All right. Um, so welcome everyone back to the um, ARB meeting. We're now going to be moving into agenda item number two, which is the opening of uh, the Warren Article Public Hearings for 2022 Special Town Meeting. Uh, we have uh, three articles that will um, each receive discussion uh, this evening. Please note that the Redevelopment Board will be um, asking uh, any questions that we might have about these amendment. Um, but we will be saving our deliberation and our voting for the April 25th meeting before um, regular town meeting. So I'll just quickly run through the uh, procedures of a public hearing. So the scope of the public hearing is the subject matter uh, as posted in the agenda. Any person wishing to address the redevelopment board on the uh, agenda items will need to identify that you'd like to speak when I uh, open this up for public comment by raising your hand. To raise your hand on Zoom, please use the raise hand fun function at the bottom of your screen. After being recognized to speak, each person will uh, introduce themselves by giving their first, last name, and street address. Each person addressing the board on this subject matter shall limit your remarks to three minutes. Uh, if time allows and you have a new and different topic, I may be able to um, allow for a, a second comment on a topic. The board can receive any oral or written evidence, but such evidence is restricted to the subject matter of the agenda item. Immaterial or unduly repetitious evidence may be excluded. Please do not show material on your background screen. All materials that you, uh, that you would like to share must be uh, must be uh, sent prior to the redevelopment board or uh, to Jenny Rape with the Department of Planning and Community and Development. Each person present at the public hearing is requested not to applause or otherwise express approval or disapproval of any statements made or action take, take or excuse me or action taken at the hearing. This includes using the um, the um, the emoji buttons or the reaction buttons within Zoom. 
Speakers should address all questions through me as the chair. Speakers shall not attempt to engage in a debate or dialogue with the redevelopment board members or hearing participants. Questions may or may not be answered during the public hearing and will be addressed at the discretion of the chair. Let's see. So um, we will go ahead and now move into our three articles that we uh, will be reviewing this evening. So the first article is Article A, a zoning bylaw amendment related to family child care. And so for each article, what we'll do is we will ask um, Jennifer Rate uh, from the Department of Planning and Community Development to provide an um, overview of the memo that was provided by the department. I'll then ask for questions um, and uh, any comments from each of the board members before opening the floor up to public comment. And we'll go ahead and kick it over to Jenny for Article A. Um, thank you. I actually, sorry, Kelly, could you jump in for a second? Um, the document that I have, this is not our memo, is, did you? Oh. Did you? Um, I mentioned earlier, sorry, before we started this hearing, so my apologies to people who are jumping in right now and may not know what I'm talking about, but we had incorporated some edits from Jean. Is that in the, is that in a different document? Let me just stop and in, share. Um, hang on. It's in a special town meeting um, hearing 4 7 2022 And then the one with Jean's initials has his comments. You got it? Okay. Very minor comments, except for the ones that are. <laughs> well, nonetheless, wanted to be looking at the correct document, very important for a public hearing. So um, these are edits, of course, in our memo. The memo is not what becomes exactly the report to town meeting, but. Um, but it's something that we can use to at least frame uh, the discussion. So um, this is a bylaw amendment that addresses family child care, as was noted. And we've discussed this previously where um, we advise that the uh, currently the family child care uh, use is, is allowed only by special permit. Um, we had in 2019 at the annual town meeting voted to amend the bylaw to comply with the Dover Amendment. Of course, that did not uh, include this particular use. Um, that was limited to religious, nonprofit, educational, and child care facilities. Um, but we, I think at that time, in retrospect, we should have addressed uh, family child care because these are smaller, um, basically home daycares. Um, and uh, what has happened is that most recently, we've received a couple of special permit applications that have been brought to our attention by the clerk's office as needing a special permit, um, despite the fact that we actually have 17 family child care providers. We've only had, and 12 are licensed for up to 10 children, two for up to eight children, and three for up to six children. This is the first time that we're receiving notification to go through the special permit process, which will happen later this month at a public hearing, separately from this conversation. Um, we had spoken about this uh, in the run up to filing these warrant articles where we talked about how family child care programs, as I just noted, are you know, divided across this sort of up to 10 children, up to eight children and up to six children. There were different feelings uh, expressed by board members about maybe having a special, special permit or a different process apply to, uh, depending upon the, the, uh, the type of ch family child care program, but um, we'll of course talk about that. Um, there are strict standards already in place for licensing these types of uses um, and providers. And, um, you know, we, we are just recommending that essentially through this amendment, the family child care use in the uh, residential, all of the residential zoning districts and all of the business zoning districts would be turned from a special permit to a, um, an allowable use by right. And then similarly, currently actually the PUD is the only place where you could have a family child care, which as you might know, doesn't really make any sense. There are no homes in that particular zoning district. 
Um, and then in the multi-use district, that covers um, that one uh, zone, which is basically Arlington 360. So we're uh, suggesting there that changes from special permit to a Y as well. And um, with that, I'll turn it back to you, Rachel. Great, thank you, Jenny. Uh, I'll ask for any questions or comments from the board. Um, again, we'll save our deliberation and our uh, voting for the 25th, and we'll start with Ken. Uh, yes, I have a couple of quick questions for Jenny Richard. Is that okay? Absolutely. Please go ahead. Uh, you stay here, there are about 12 uh, licensed uh, uh, home care providers, home child care providers right now. Out of those 12, they're, they're up to 10. Do we have, do we get a lot of complaints about traffic or noise or anything else like that from, from those centers? Or did they fit fairly well into the neighborhood? We have not received any complaints and are not aware of any record of complaints about these particular uses um, in people's homes. Because um, I, I, don't, I don't really see a, a problem myself with having these in the business uh, or, you know, mixed use or, uh, you know, any of the PUDs, but in, in the residential, I just think, and I'll, I'll let the rest of the board uh, talk about it a little bit more, but some of the, uh, the 10 or 12 childcare in uh, the residential district, maybe there gotta be some sort of threshold I was thinking about. I think I was the one that brought up the number of kids in, in the childcare, you know, Six is not that, I don't think that's that big of a deal, up to six, but I think we start getting up to, up to 10 or 12, it's just getting to be a, quite a crowd uh, around pickup time and drop off time and just uh, um, around playtime, uh, you know, outside playtime. So that's my only concern right now. I'll let the rest of the board discuss it and see what they think too. Thank you, Ken. Keen? Um, yeah, I actually think is, this is fine. I think to me, the big question will be, um, what do we put in our rules and regulations about this? Um, but I think this is certainly fine um, to do since there won't be any more than 10. Yeah, 10 can be loud. Um, but I think those are the things I hope that we can, you know, work through in what we put in our rules and regulations to implement this. So yeah, I have no real questions about it. Great, thank you, Jean. Uh, Melissa. I'm, I'm fine with this. I think um, <clears throat> I'm concerned a little bit about noise as well, or anticipating neighbors being concerned with noise probably really and how that kind of translates to complaints for building. Um, but Jenny, we haven't had any kind of complaints on noise or parking then I feel comfortable moving this forward. Uh, Jenny, just to further on Melissa's um, question there about whether or not we, we've had, or Ken's original about having complaints about noise, would that typically come into you or to uh, inspectional services? No, it might. I mean, it might be reported to inspectional services. It's probably more likely to be, you know, something to the town manager's office or okay. the police department, I suppose, depending upon the, the noise. Uh, complaint could go to the, it also could go to the Board of Health, I suppose, but probably more likely uh, one of those other departments. I'm again, I'm not aware of any complaints about these, uh, any of the child Do you care wanna providers. Here, you want me to go downstairs? Melissa. Uh, thanks. That's okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Melissa, any further questions? All right, Steve. Um, I was actually a little surprised to see that this wasn't already covered over covered by our Dover amendment changes. Uh, I have no questions. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, and I didn't have any questions either. Again, to um, 
from what I understand from the memo is that, you know, per some of the, and Jenny, please correct me if I'm wrong, that per the interpretation of the Dover Amendment, that this really does belong, um, to, this really does in terms of the classification belong to be treated in, in a similar fashion to the way that we're treating these other uses. And so this is correcting a um, nonconformity and that to Kin's question about how, Kin's question might be something that we could address in the rules and regulations piece. Is that fair to say? Um, I'll, I'll take the first part. Um, the okay. first part, um, yeah, I think that this should be an allowed use by right. Um, that is apparently how Kelly did research on this with other communities, and perhaps she can share a little bit more about what she read. But in summary, um, most other communities just allow this use by right and might have some very limited to no review um, internally of any, any uh, you know, you know, details that we're talking about here, like um, parking or circulation or any of those right. things. Um, it's an allowed use. Um, so I, I don't, I, do, I think that that covers uh, that portion. Uh, with what Ken was suggesting, I suppose it could be addressed as part of the board rules and regulations. That's, that is one way to handle that. I, again, I, I would suggest minimal levels of rules and regulations around this particular use. We right. already have a review process set in place for Dover uses. And I would just basically say that it would it would just follow the along same. the same lines, if not even less. It's a much more minimal um, use. That makes sense. Kelly? Yeah, I just to note that um, I looked at a number of neighboring municipalities and this use is allowed by right in almost all of them, if anything, just with um, staff level review. Um, and in part because these businesses are both accessory uses, they're accessory to the to they're an accessory use to somebody who lives at that property, um, whether they're renting or they own the property. And then the other thing is that they're very neighborhood serving uses. So, you know, while you may have people dropping off in cars, you probably have an equal number of, of parents or guardians who are dropping off by walking their their um, walking the child to the to the uh, family daycare location. And I think the other thing that you may see probably more than anything would be like a request for a small sign, um, but that also is not all that common. Great, thank you for the clarification, Kelly. Jean? Just a quick question, because Kelly mentioned accessory use. I think if we change the lines in, in, the, uh, in the charts to Y, they won't be considered accessory uses here. They'll just be considered an allowable use in those districts. Do you think that's right? Because alternatively, we could make them accessory uses, but I think this is probably cleaner to do it this way. Uh, Jenny, I'll give that one to you because I, well, I'll ask, ask you to respond to that one. Um, I, I mean, are you suggesting that we simply strike accessory use? I mean, it's written as an accessory use. I, I just raise that as an issue, but I don't know if it's an issue though, because again, these uses are highly, they're already regulated and there's a whole licensing process. The use could not stand alone. It would be in somebody's home. That's the yeah. whole point of the family child care at home. I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. I just guess because Kelly use the term. Great. Yeah, uh, we're just, the tables, the tables are, or, this is like, you know, the clipping from our tables and our bylaw. So this is how I think we currently classify it. Is that correct? Yeah. Ken, did you have any follow-up questions um, before we move to public comments? No, I, I'm supportive of this. I just was questioning, you know, maybe uh, Gene's correct. We just add in the rules where um, there are, uh, it, it, when, when the home, home child care is larger, they may uh, make an effort to make staggered pickup and drop off. That's all, just to minimize the, uh, the impact of the neighborhood. That's all. 
something like that, something very simple, nothing, you know, where they have to do a special permit or, or go through the whole thing, but they just make their best effort to stagger, stagger it once it becomes larger than 10, but that's just gonna be a simple rule uh, that we just ask. Great, thank you, Ken. <clears throat> All right, um, any other uh, questions from the board before we open public comment? All right, at this time, um, I will ask any member of the public wishing to comment on Article A to please um, indicate that you'd like to do so by using the raise hand function. All right, seeing none, we will close public comment on Article A. Um, any other further discussion from the board before we move to Article B? All right, so at this point, let's move to Article B, uh, which is a zoning bylaw, excuse me, zoning bylaw amendment relative to signs. And I will kick it over to Jenny. I'm actually going to kick this over to Kelly, who um, we, um, we had a lot of discussion about this and she's done the background research and also um, looked at some of the comments that we received from Jean about this particular um, amendment and the phrasing of it and how it might be within scope of the warrant article or not. So I would like to have Kelly um, discuss this one. Rachel, okay. is that all right? That's perfect. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Sure. So this is a, um, this is this amendment or this article came about because um, the sign bylaw was adopted by town meeting in 2019. Uh, but at the time we did not have very many publicly accessible EV charging stations. And we also were using Lime Bikes, which is a dockless bike share program instead of um, Blue Bikes. Since then, we have had a number of requests for the installation of um, publicly accessible EV charging stations on private uh, parking lots. Um, for example, in um, like a supermarket parking lot. Um, and a lot of these charging stations are advertisement driven. So they would be include, included in this would be a certain element of signage and our sign bylaw does not currently allow that. Um, at the same time, we have um, accepted a contract, we've gone into a multi-year contract with Blue Bikes and Blue Bike stations have an area of signage on the station, um, part, partially to um, advertise Blue Bikes, um, but also this could be used as like a map or wayfinding. It could also be used for um, local advertising or municipal advertising. And again, this is, not, this is also not allowed. So the purpose of this amendment is to create definitions for a shared mobility docking station and a definition for an EV charging station. Um, by calling it a shared mobility docking station, we're looking to not limit ourselves only to bicycles, just in case there is some sort of unanticipated future form of shared mobility. Um, and then allowing this, um, allowing these types of signage as an exemption um, within certain um, dimensional requirements. So Jenny, if you can scroll down. Um, uh, Oh, our, our numbers disappeared. Um, oh, sorry, no, that is part of it. If you go down to the next page, it's the very end of the exemptions here. Um, so allowing signage for shared mobility and then allowing signage for EV charging stations within certain limitations. So we looked at what the current dimensional um, but the current dimensions of these types of signs are, and we wanted to make sure that the that an applicant for this kind of sign cannot exceed that size or the number of signs. And this was based on a comment by Jean as well as limiting the number of signs per docking station or number of signs per EV charging station. And then also referencing um, in accordance with section 6.2.4 C, which has limits on sign illumination. So just making sure that those, those um, are applied consistently throughout the town, even on these types of signs. Um, and then looking, the other location um, that we've addressed this in is 6.2.3A4, um, because signs are not currently allowed along the Minuteman bikeway. And so we have included a clause here to allow them, um, specifically allow shared mobility docking stations, because that is, where a number of our uh, blue bike stations are right now. 
And that's it. I know that Jean had expressed a little some concern about whether this was not in compliance with the warrant article. Um, because the warrant article does state that um, the purpose of this warrant article is to create a new sign type. And um, what I think we'd like to discuss with the board is whether this would fall under um, the ability to take any other action related there too. All right. um, I just want to add one thing. Thank you, Kelly. Rachel, is it okay if I add? Please, go ahead. Just that it, we are still creating a new sign type. That hasn't changed. We, we're adding definitions here about the type of docking station, and then we're adding, we're making it clear that there's these signage applying to these types of stations. So I, I do think that that is covered. Um, how we handle it was not addressed in the warrant article, but for saying that we're going to amend the section of signs. So I think I, mean, I think we could address it in multiple ways. Our preference would be that it is viewed as an exemption, you know, to be reviewed in accordance with you know staff review. Any sort of other permitting that goes through inspectional services would occur, which has occurred with other. Um, uh, EV charging stations, at least. Blue Bikes is different and is operated, um, is reviewed by our department and the Department of Public Works. Great, thank you, Jenny. Uh, why don't we go ahead and start with Jean, since uh, you submitted several comments and had a couple questions already related to this article. Yeah, so when we had the, I mean, I appreciate the um, staff doing this and, and, you know, I think when we, had the discussion with the staff last time, there was a general understanding we needed to um, do something in the zoning bylaw for these types of signs. And the suggestion that the board made that ended up in the Warren article was to create a new sign type. And, you know, as much as Jenny is right many more times than I am right at these meetings, I, for me, it's stretching it too far to say an exemption is a new sign type. So I'm, I'm very troubled by that. I think it would be pretty easy to turn this into a sign type because you've done most of the work. The other concern, and, and I, Kelly and, and Jenny sort of, you know, adding those things, which were the other thing that I mentioned. I mean, my, my other concern about having it as an exemption is then there are all of these other rules that are um, specific to signs that they'd be exempt from. And I just sort of think it's better to, um, to have it as a new sign type and therefore subject to all the requirements of signs rather than to exempt it. So yeah, so I'm having, a hard time seeing how it fits as a new sign type. It's a new exemption. But Do you have a specific section that you would propose adding the new sign type to? Well, there are a whole bunch of sign types. So you just- There are, so just add another. Yeah, you just add another add sign type. At the end, it could be, you know, a combination of the mobility stations and the and the others and just move, move these things down, down there then it would be subject to all of the rules and we'd add these rules. So that that's, you know, if we thought about it ahead of time and we didn't say, you know, it must be a new sign type, maybe we would have said exemption would work just as well. But I think there's a little advantage to have it as a new sign type, but I'm happy to be told how I've gone astray. Any? Any, um, I did. I just, just want to note that. Really, the, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's right. Um, we did look at other bylaws in crafting this as well, and so just looking at Somerville and Cambridge and Hartford, Connecticut, places where they do have shared mobility stations like this, um, they are included as an exemption. Um, so it, it's not without precedent to have it as an exemption. And part of it is because when you're looking at 
it's like bike shares, docking stations, they're not tied to a specific property. Sometimes they're in the right of way, sometimes they're along a shared use path. And so it's a little bit more difficult to um, kind of pin them to a specific location. And they're also sort of a, a, um, a shared public good. Thank you, Kelly. Jean, Jean did you wanna, anything further on that discussion? No, I just, I just think we limited ourselves by the wording in the warrants article and we can't do exemptions. That's my thought about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jenny. Yeah, just, um, I'm, I understand what you're saying. Jean, and what one, my suggestion to be responsive to what you're saying would be that we just simply create the sign type, but we still exempt it. I, I don't, I think that that's still allowed because the, the warrant article is saying to create a new sign type at shared mobility. It doesn't, it doesn't need to say to exempt the use or exempt the type. It just says to up, to update section two and 6.2, and 6.2 is pretty comprehensive, which included 6.2.1 and 6.2.3. And it could include, I forget the, um, maybe it's 6.2.6. .6. I think there's a couple of other areas where we could add these signs. Um, we have all the dimensions, so it's not, it would not be challenging to just say, here's the sign type we're talking about, which is also exempt. Um, it might be a little bit awkward, but that would be the way that I'm suggesting handling it, Rachel. Jenny, why why would you do that rather? I mean, since you already have everything you need here to say sign type and then to put these requirements mm -hmm. in, why would you, I, I mean, you may be right. I'm just wondering why you would want to exempt it. Oh, because I don't think that it should go through a redevelopment board review process. So I'm thinking that it's exempt from that review process. And the same thing goes for other sign reviews that we do that happened administratively. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as it, when it's in, you know, the, is a similar process essentially. Um, but at least during that review process, we do have a reference in the bylaw that says mm -hmm. it looks like this while we're making, you know, conducting that review. So I suppose that. You know, yes, again, I'm trying to be in keeping with your comment. We would have the example sign type and say, okay, yes, that's right. That's the example sign type, but it's actually exempt. But it does look like that, meets the dimensional requirements, et cetera. Yeah, I, I certainly think you could do that. You could create this sign type and say, if this sign meets these requirements, it's <clears> exempt. <throat> yeah, I think you could do that. That's, that's exactly. That'd be great. So following on that, then we would need to add that to table, the table in um, C in, gosh, which was this, sorry, I have to, 6.2.5, would that need to write up in the table for 6.2.5 C, standards for permanent signs, if it's, a defined new sign type. <clears throat> yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we would add it to that. We would say Y's across. Yeah, Jean, um, would that I help? Think. Would that help you in terms of? Um, would that help meet the point that you're trying to make in terms of ensuring that this is read as a new sign type if it is, if it appears in that table? <clears throat> Yeah, and you know, and each sign type has, um, you know, awning sign must do this, bracket sign must do this. So the last one could be, <clears throat> I want to call this, you know, mobility station and something sign. So I think, yeah, I think it could be done pretty easily. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, anything else, Jean? Nope. Great, Ken. <clears throat> um, does these signs uh, preclude advertisement? Uh, I'll ask Jenny to address that. No, they couldn't. They could. They might have advertising. Uh, mostly, the EV charging station one usually has advertising. So, is there something? Not, that not should... the blue bikes. 
stations. Uh, but they may in the future. I mean, if we're giving this- They could in the future, I suppose. So, I mean, one, one thing, that, one model that we're looking at and we're asking for an appropriation from town meeting, but if um, in order to help pay for the, um, for maintaining the, and operating the blue bikes uh, stations that we have, um, if we, but we're also looking at potentially sponsorships. And so there is a scenario where we have a, you know, a sponsorship of a bike docking station and we, you know, we could, this is, this is a scenario. It's not illustrative of your question. The answer is that it could be like, uh, you know, some bank or some other, you know, business that is sponsoring that station, um, whatever the business type might be. Um, having some advertising on one side of the blue bikes, because it's a, it's a two-sided sign, right? For, uh, sign that's attached to the docking station. So one side is gonna talk about blue bikes, have a picture of people riding bikes. The other side could potentially have some advertising for the, that title, that sponsor of the station. I mean, this is just a scenario, but yes, that's where the ad, that advertising might come in, but it would oh. be because they're sponsoring the station. Yeah, that's why I want to talk about, should we put some sort of rules and regulations about that? Because I see the potential of having these ads in the back of these things there. Like when you go, let's say you go example to a shopping center and they have these marquee um, triangular wayfinding signs, you know, where one side is the directional where you are in the mall and the other, three, the other two sides our advertisement that has maybe have rolling screens every couple of minutes, they have a different ad up there. Or in some cases where it could be um, like a big, large TV monitor where they just have advertisement going on all the time. And is that something we want to just talk about and uh, either knowledge? Yes, we like that. We don't like that. Um, I, I, something like that I want to bring up because I think this could, could potentially develop that way. Uh, where, you know, one side of it is all the, uh, the blue bike stuff, but the other side is like a big advertising board that's, uh, that sells soda or, uh, or whatever, you know? No, I, I hope it doesn't sell that <laughs> just on the blue bike side, but, well, um, but you, you I know see what, what, I, I see what I'm getting yes. at, right? I do. Absolutely. I, I, that, I think that's unlikely, and that's not really the model of the blue bike system. So the, the typical model of the blue bike system is one side, it has advertising for blue bikes, which is what it is. It's, it's a statement about what is happening with the, do, at the, with the bikes in the docking station. Um, the other side is typically something community oriented. I mean, for example, I've seen signs that are advertising farmers markets, um, talking about an upcoming event in a community. I mean, there's a lot of different uses uses for that other sign face. Um, and they're also, they're static. They're not like the moving signs that you're talking about that you might see on like a billboard or something like a digital billboard. It's not like that on the blue bike signs. Um, so, so, do we I don't, wanna, so that's what I'm saying. Do we want to limit it to a static sign for now and limit that advertisement to community related uh, information? And that'd be fine. Or do we want to actually talk about having those as advertising and have all that stuff there? And that, that in turn would help sponsor the blue bikes and sponsor uh, bike repair or repair station there for bikes. So I'm not sure, you know, I just think that we have an opportunity that we should talk about. And same thing with the charging stations. They're going to be a sign there that, we can, that also could be used for advertisement or not advertisement. Uh, I just... It's something that it's, it's it's all new, and I like to talk about it. That's all one thing I like to discuss uh, with the board. And then last thing is uh, with the rules: we're we gonna we're gonna state that uh, these signs, placement of these signs, and and where these signs are located, it doesn't interfere with um, a handicapped person. You know, let's say uh, we you know, so if something sticks up beyond four inches, it has to come down to the ground almost. So. Someone with a walking cane can, can see that sign, so they don't want to walk into these blade signs, that kind of stuff. I, mean, I think that we're talking about two different things. We're talking it about is. the, placement. Two the things. placement of the stations is a whole different permitting process. So I think we were talking about that pre last time, the select board. No, but the signs, 
Isn't the, the signs different the from sign the sign is attached to the station itself. It's not freestanding or anything like that. It's literally part of okay. the station. Um, it's all one big unit. So one end has the sign um, <laughs> with the sign face, the bikes in a row, and then some payment system on the other end. That's and basically the, the shape of the station. And what about the um, charging stations? The charging stations, as I've seen the ones that have been um, provided to us that we weren't able to permit are these sort of um, larger, just more independent freestanding signs with the charging uh, connected to them. But they're integrated into the charging but they have the Into, charging integrated into the charging, yeah the charging machine yeah apparatus so kim to your <laughs> point would we be able to um perhaps add something in here about the signage being integrated into the structure of the charging station or the mobility um shared mobility station would that serve yeah that'd be fine purpose and, yeah. and um, you know, something about how they're not obstructing the public way or something to that effect. That's really what, I mean, that's, I'm sure that I have to scrub through the signage um, bylaw, but I'm sure that that is most likely covered because we have to do that for, um, you know, parking signage, et cetera, yeah. elsewhere. I'm I'm okay with that. Jenny, do you have a concern? Only about the point about the public way. Again, I, that's where you know that some of these are in, like on a sidewalk or in the parking space. I mean, most of them are in a public right. area. That's where they tend. No, to No, I understand right. that it's the obstruction piece. Sure. Yeah, and it's just that that's. I understand it's just like um, that mm -hmm. to me is not a zoning bylaw issue because it is under that it is something that is approved by the select board. Um, I'm happy to put it in, but I'm just want to make that clear. No, yeah. it's just something for safety or so, just so it's not in, the, in, in harm's way or causes harm. Okay. Anything else, Ken? No. All right. Thank you. Melissa. Um, no, I'm fine. I think with the advertising, um, are we saying that it's illuminated as well? Uh, I don't think that's where we well, we ha I don't know that we've landed any place with it other than I, I think there was a um, desire expressed to limit moving video on the signs, recognizing that um, a certain amount of advertising does typically occur within these within these signs. Ken, would you? I uh, thought it was, I thought uh, Jenny yeah. said it was more mm -hmm. uh, for community. Um, Limited to community advertisement? Something like that. That's what that's that's what Jenny said. That, uh, that it could also potentially become a sponsorship. So if like, oh. let's so, say I mean, essentially Diet Coke want to take take yeah. uh, put a sign up there, and we got mm -hmm. these Diet Coke signs all over up and down the street, or some, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. That's something I. I sorry, Miss, I didn't interrupt you there, but no, you're uh, fine. That's what I was trying to get at. No, we're not going to ask Diet Coke to sponsor a blue bike station. We would be asking a community business to help sponsor. So it could serve as this is a, a possibility. I'm not saying this is the purpose of that other sign face, but it could be a place where, you know, it, it recognizes that sponsor. So, Ken, are you suggesting? suggesting that there be a limitation to on advertisement to community advertisement. I, I think 
<clears throat> what Jenny's telling me is, is not really advertisement. It's, it's uh, an acknowledgement of sponsorship right. on the other side. So I don't count that as advertisement. Or it is, but it isn't. Uh, I mean, like you, you see those little islands of all the, the, the plantings, and it's, it's saying this planting is sponsored by, um, yeah, it is by somebody, either a company or whatever. Or whatever, yeah. Or, yeah. So I'm assuming that's what she's saying. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jane. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, that you, you know, we'll, we'll be asking somebody to sponsor this blue bike station here and say this is this blue bike is sponsored by a bank for, for example and then they might have something a little logo there but that's it it's not like really an advertisement i think it, it could be if you want you're limiting it potentially and it could be more than that um i just wouldn't want to preclude that i, I think we're Again, I think it could be something bigger than a logo. It could be more than that. Well, then I, I don't know. I, then if it's that, I, I like to take a look at that and say, what is it? I mean, I, I don't think that, sh that should be then come up to uh, that. If it's different from that, we should talk about because I don't want to see uh, advertisement up and down Mass Ave, where these locations are. I don't know what the rest of the board feels like. Well, let's turn it back to Melissa because I this was <laughs> sorry. That's okay. No, no, no. I appreciate your clarifications, um, Melissa. You would, you had asked about where we landed with the advertising discussion. So interested in your thoughts? Well, I mean, generally, I understand that you know, kind of putting these mobility stations in places, they need advertisements and they, there's hiccups with the signage. So you're trying to remove kind of the obstacles to the approval for that. Is that right, Jenny? Yes. Yeah, um, because number one, it's kind of hard enough as it is to kind of get the location and then you have these other obstacles. So, um, Elimination. I I think I'm comfortable with this. I mean, I, I think I know what you know Ken's going with. There's a concern that there could be egregious, you know, corporate signage. I mean, yes. Would it be limited to probably the box that you know the you know blue bike sign is on? Probably yes. So it can't exceed that blue box signage, right? Correct. Yeah, it would be on, you know, one sign face would have something about blue bikes and the other sign face might have something about a, a sponsor. A sponsor. But also but might might have something about a community event. Yeah, it could be something, you know, very community oriented. It could be a local business, but I mean, it could be someone who pays money like, you know, Chase Bank or something like that. So I do kind of get a little concerned with that. Um, I don't know if we want to limit that in any way, kind of the, the some kind of bit of your generic corporate kind of thing. But overall, I understand what we're trying to do here. So I want to move this forward. So I'd kind of, is there any way we can kind of curb that? What kind of, where it becomes borderline for advertisement or not? So perhaps I can ask that Jenny in a different way. The, these all still require a, administrative approval, correct? Yes. So that would be something that perhaps could be, that there would be a discussion at that point with you and, and the team in the department about. Are there, sorry, are there guidelines that the administration me? piece, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Rachel. Nope, that's all I had. Okay, so through the administrative uh, review process, would there, is there something in the guidelines that, you know, kind of, flags for a corporate, something like that. Jenny. Or, I mean, those are things that we could review, of course. I mean, I don't, I, it's not like we're soliciting corporate advertisements. We'd be working to find a, um, a sponsor 
if we're unable to afford the cost of the blue bike system, we are going to have to find sponsors to pay for the blue bikes. Otherwise we won't have blue bikes in Arlington anymore. So just to be very yeah, specific I understand about that. this, right? I understand so so that like if in order to make the, the, the cost work, we, we may need to figure out a way to allow for some advertising on this sign. I don't know exactly what that advertising might look like, but, um, and I'm not sure at the, at this current moment how I would limit it because it would be, it would be on that sign face, the you know panel, I keep saying face, panel. Um, right. I, I feel like I understand that the, it would need to be subsidized with, you know, some sponsorship or advertisement. I support the bike itself. I understand location is challenging and I'm understanding, um, that, you know, in terms of signage, we want to, you know, it's only one side from as, as far as we understand, but I think, um, you know, it's just, we don't have guidelines. Like, is it vaping? Is it, you know, something, you know, just some things that maybe as a community, we don't want to support and advertise on there, even though they might, and it's not you or the program, it is the corporate reality that they will exploit that piece. So, so Melissa, I don't think though, again, because Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong, it's the town who's soliciting the sponsorships, correct? That's right. right. Yes. It's so not, it would that's not be not just a, open to any business. Right. Yeah. So that's not a zoning bylaw item. That's a select board and, or whomever would be working through the funding um, discussion. I don't think that belongs at all in the zoning bylaw. Who is an acceptable sponsor. That's not under our purview. So if I may, Rachel, I understand that. So what I'm asking though, is if we're opening it up to advertising, where are the guardrails for that? If it comes in the selectment and the solicitation and some agreement, then that's fine with me. I'm trying to understand is if we just open it to all advertisements and then next thing we know, we're allowing kind of vaping because they gave us the highest bid for the sponsorship. Again, that's not that's um, that's not under the purview of the zoning bylaw. That's that's under the purview. Who the sponsor is 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 not under um, this particular this bylaw. Uh, Rachel, can I say something? Okay. okay. I think what Melissa's trying to get at, and is we're approving or allowing advertisement yes or no that's within our purview and and if we do a, a approve advertisement we want to put some sort of guardrails or some sort of regulations or some sort of uh understanding what what these advertisements are allowed i think that's what what we're trying to get at that's what i was sort of mentioning so earlier what we can what we can affect in terms of um in terms of signage regulations are size and placement, not content. So what we need to identify then is on the face of that sign, do we want to limit on that sign face the size of the advertisement? That is something that could be in a zoning bylaw. Limiting content is not something that can be in the zoning bylaw in terms of um, who would be doing the advertising? Jenny, do you think that's a fair way? 100% right, yes. Um, and um, as Kelly says, time, place, and manner, that is what we can put. That's what we can do with our sign bylaw. That is it. So if you would like to see um, a proposal where the square footage of the potential advertising section is smaller, then that's something that we can discuss, but we can't limit who is advertising on these signs. I'm gonna actually um, ask Steve, Jean, I'm gonna have Steve weigh in because he hasn't had a chance to speak yet, and then I'll come back to you. Steve? Uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to jump back to Mr. Benson's uh, request to have uh, a new sign type in a table. Um, I actually like that idea. One thing I like about our sign bylaw is it's got pictures and 
you know, it sort of makes it easier to get an idea of what kind of sign, um, you know, you're, you're talking about. Now, with respect to the, now, when we redid our sign bylaw a few years ago, uh, we did so because it was not in compliance with uh, a Supreme Court ruling called Reed versus Gilbert. And what Reed versus Gilbert said is that, you know, municipalities can regulate, um, you know, like time, place, and manner for a sign location, um, as, as we said before. And the regulations have to be content neutral. So I don't think we can actually regulate whether there could be ads. Um, I believe that, you know, a movement on the sign, um, like a, a moving display or something is constitutes manner, and we can regulate that. And I seem to remember our bylaw already doing that if it, and if that needs to needed to be specifically spelled out for uh, these kinds of mobility signs I'd I'd be supportive of that but um, otherwise I, I think this is is fairly straightforward stuff and I'm generally supportive thank you great thank you Steve uh, Gene yeah a few things um... I'm actually not so worried about the advertising because the signs are going to be pretty small. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I'm not too concerned about that. I think that we do, and, and I think this is right, we can make a distinction between on-premises advertising and off-premises advertising. So we could, and I think we do that, say, you know, you can advertise your own business on your front window, but you can't advertise somebody else's business on your front window. And I think we could technically say the same thing to these. You can advertise, you know, yourself and thank your sponsors, but I think we could say you can't advertise another business, um, but I'm not sure. But I, I wouldn't go that way because I don't see the ads as being a really big problem. I want to get back to the exemption piece um, since Steve and I are in alignment that it would be nice to have this as a sign type. I think I think one thing we can do, which is just say, you know, if they meet these requirements, they're exempt from all the sign pieces. Um, alternatively, we can put these things in and say they're um, subject to all the requirements of the sign bylaw, except they don't need to get a permit if they meet these specific criteria. So I think there are a couple of ways that we can do it. The, the third way is if they're going to be six blue bike stations, we can issue one or the staff, since you know we send this to the staff, the staff through administrative review can do one for all six of them. Because somebody, I think maybe it was you, Rachel said, but the staff will have administrative review. And my response is not if we exempt it from all of these things except the size, the staff won't have any administrative review. So I think we have to decide whether we want the staff to have administrative review or not. Um, I'd say it depends, but you know, if you want them to look at advertising and other things, yes. If you don't, I'd say then we don't have to have them um, do that. Um, and then I just want to mention one thing aside, because um, something Ken said got me thinking, if we go back to the definition of shared mobility docking station, they're going to be electric bicycles and they're motorized, right? So um, I think we need to think about what to do with that part of the definition that says our other non-motorized vehicles, since I expect they'll be that and maybe they'll even be docking stations for motorized, those other little things people go crazy on sometimes. So I think- Scooters, motorized scooters, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, and the thing with one wheel, have you seen those? I forgot what Yes, yeah. yeah. So um, so I think we need to think about that, but even if they don't do, you know, there, there are gonna be, and there are in some other places, electric bicycles and docking 
stations. So that's one thing. And then how about, um, I haven't seen any of their signs, but Zipcar, I think they're gonna start doing electric cars and they're gonna to have to have, you know, electric plug-in for when they go back to the spaces. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure where to go with that other than we, we can't simply say non-motorized vehicles, but we can't say all motorized vehicles because then you end up with Zipcar and who knows what else who are gonna have electric vehicles. So I did wanna mention that too, but going back now, I don't, I don't think advertising is a big deal. Um, I think I, I like putting it in here as a separate sign category. I don't think we should exempt them from the requirements. I think we should just exempt them from needing a permit if they meet the specific requirements there. But that's just another way to think about doing it. Um, Rachel, I'm okay with going with what Jean said on that. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Um, so we will we will have um, you know time for deliberation on the 25th. Um, in terms of any any items we'd like Jenny to take a look at, or we'd like the members of the board to um, to think on and perhaps share suggested wording to for Jenny so that we have something to react to um, when we meet again. Um, what I'd ask is that we think about that. I'll look, if the board is um, okay with me opening it up for public comment, I'd like to um, see if there is, is any public comment and then I'll go back through everyone on the board and make sure that we have a list of uh, follow-up items um, before we move on to the next uh, article. All right, uh, so at this time, I would like to open, um, open the floor up for public comment. Um, please use the raise hand function if you would like to address this, uh, this article. Um, you will have up to three minutes. And uh, before you begin your comments, please introduce yourself with your first, last name, and address. And we will begin with Chris. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. Can you hear me okay? I can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a few comments. Um, I guess, you know, I hadn't intended to speak on this one, but after hearing the conversation, um, frankly, it sounds to me like what the board wants to approve are billboards. And historically, that billboards are something that have been strictly regulated by the town. And, and in fact, they still are. And they do regulate content because essentially they're saying if you're putting up a sign, that doesn't advertise the business or what's happening in that location, it's not allowed. And now you're creating an, an exception to that because basically the town is invited in a failed business called shared bike, bike, uh, blue bikes. And I believe there's a warrant article before a town meeting to give them another $100,000 per year out of taxpayers' money because they're not a viable business. And I think the board needs to think very carefully about how it wants to allow billboards to subsidize these types of failing businesses. Because I could see the select board, you know, if they do it in this case, what other cases are they going to do it in? It seems to me this one really isn't ready for prime time. And it might well be worth waiting to see what happens with that subsidy vote um, at town meeting, because I, I suspect if that fails, they're not gonna be in town anyway. And this change might not even be needed. So I, I, I hardly think this is, a proper subject for a special town meeting that needs you know, expedited approval. I think it, what it really needs is a lot more thought and consideration. And I'd ask the board to give it that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other members of the public wishing to speak on this item? All right, seeing none, we will close public comment for um, article B. And I'll just run through to see if there are um, any additional uh, topics that we want to um, ask questions of Jenny of or um, request further, um, you know, a further pass before our meeting on the 25th. And I'll start with Jean. Um, my, my one question is about 
contracts. So will the town enter into a contract with Blue Bikes if it is Blue Bikes? So no, but no company will come in here without having a contract from the town. Is that right? For the bike share? Yeah. Yes, we have a current contract with Blue Bikes right now. The right. other electric vehicle charging stations was meant to be a private, private so, companies so there on private any, property. So there wouldn't be any contract? There would not be a contract, no. Okay. The electric vehicle charging stations that have been installed in the town have been installed by right. the town in right. public parking yep. spaces. And there are at least one public one one in private that I'm aware of. But there is one private one. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, actually two private ones. Um yeah, I think we should. I guess it's another reason to think about um not exempting them, but maybe just exempting them from the permitting requirement and thinking a little bit about whether there needs to be any other distinction between the two types. But I, I think it's, I'm not sure what the answer to that is. I think it needs a little more thought. That's it. Great, thanks, Gene. Kim? I think I'm fine for now. I, I think I'd like to think about this a little bit more. Okay. Thank you. Back to this, okay? That sounds good. Thank you, Ken. And uh, I appreciate the, um, the the topics that you brought up this evening. Uh, Melissa. Um, no further comment. Thank you. Um, Steve. Nothing further, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you. And I don't have uh, any further comments either. Um, let's see. So we now will move to Article C, which is a zoning by law amendment related to non-conforming single family or two family dwellings. And I will turn it over to Jenny. And for, for this, actually, I was going to see if I, I know that we have Pat Hanlon here, as well as Mike Champa. And I was hoping that um, in my presentation, if they are interested in adding um, to this discussion or being part of the dialogue that they may potentially participate. Pat is a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals and Mike is the Director of Inspectional Services. Great, thank you, Jenny. Um, so I just ask if you have any specific areas that you'd like them to weigh in on, if you could direct that to them at the end of your comments, that would be great. Certainly, and, and this was raised, that the whole this whole amendment was raised by town council and uh, we have had a follow-up conversation with town council, um, which led to essentially, I think the decision that the best course of action would be to delete the section, um, to strike it in its entirety. Um, but in order to get a little more uh, fuller perspective of that, that's where I would like to hear from either Pat or Mike or both. Um, because after the review, essentially we, we you know, not to walk through the entire memo here, but we we did talk about how the elimination would be the best way to address this particular issue, both the conflict um, that it presents um, and, you know, that it's essentially, it's creating the wrong structure uh, for what this bylaw is saying. It's the wrong structure in order to address this issue. Um, further, it's also somewhat duplicative. And then lastly, I think it it's, uh, the building inspector already has the discretion and the bylaw outlines the discretion of the of the building inspector in section three. Um, and their determination is key um, in determining non nonconformities and determining any uh, next steps that are necessary in order for a project to proceed. So um, again, this, uh, this is not in compliance with recent case law and the determination has been made that the best course of action would be to delete it in its entirety. Um, and I think I'll stop there. We, we did talk about some, you know, just as part of that conversation, we did talk about things that were sort of like, perhaps the, the redevelopment board and the zoning board of appeals could look at some sort of joint guidelines. That was a little bit beyond this particular, it was more than just this amendment um, because this amendment really relates more directly with the Zoning Board of Appeals than it does to the Redevelopment Board, which is why I would like to hear uh, potentially from Pat. So that's all. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Jenny. 
Um, so Pat Hanlon, um, I believe that you're here with us this evening. If you could yes. introduce yourself and we'd love to hear your perspective on this article. Well, could you wait for just a second? Absolutely. I hadn't expected to do this, so I took my headphones off. Oh, no problem. <clears throat> So, as as you all know, the the vested rights that and how you treat them uh, is laid out <clears throat> in an obscure way in the zoning uh, <clears throat> in the zoning act in section six, and the basic rule in section six is pretty much described in section eight point one point three b. And there, the Belalta case recently sort of made it clear that you could have an, a, the, the key thing is whether or not the first, the thing that starts the process going is that the building inspector would have to make a decision as to whether or not a structural change in a single or two family residential structure uh, would, uh, increase the non-conforming nature of the structure. Uh, and if the answer to that question is no, uh, then the, uh, the structural change can be done as a matter of right. If the answer to that question is yes, then the structural change uh, can be made <clears throat> only if the Board of Appeals makes a uh, what's a section six finding, which is essentially the same thing that we would do in the structure of a special permit. And that sort of is what, the way 8.1.3b is supposed to work. Um, there is an additional situation that can happen. And that is where uh, instead of the structural change increasing the non-conforming nature that already exists, um, it could be an additional non-conformity. So this isn't going to help you, for example, if you've got a problem with your with uh, intruding on a setback and you want to make your house 40 feet tall. Um, it And so that's an easy case, but sometimes those kinds of decisions are not so easy. The way in which the, the courts envision this happening uh, is that the uh, building inspector will make the initial decision. There's always the possibility under section 3.3 .3 that uh, there might be an appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals of that decision. That's, that's there and not really an issue here. Uh, and if so, and where there's a situation where the increase of in the existing nonconformity um, uh, is uh, uh, <clears throat> is is increased, then the Board of Appeals has to decide whether or not the change will be substantial more substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing system. Um, Section C is a problem because, it purports to take as particular kind of circumstance where you extend a wall uh, backwards or sideways, any, any way of extending it. And it defines in a way that in some cases is different from what you'd come out at in section by applying section B and says, you have to do it this way. Um, and while the board of the town meeting and the town has the authority to treat vested rights more favorably than the state does. It can prevent, give more protection to the property owner. It can't cut back on the, on the protection that the property owner has by state law. And under some circumstances, section C is apt to do that. Uh, now, so then the question is, well, what do you do about that? And I think in discussing it, the where we came out really is that section C in some ways does more harm than good. We have a structure that's prescribed by state law. We know how to make it work. The courts tell us how to make it work. Uh, Mr. Champa is obviously in the driver's seat on the initial determination of all of these things that set, sets all of this off. And uh, if there's a situation where 
there's a disagreement about the way in which the zoning bylaw applies their procedures for dealing with those. Um, so rather than trying, to, so it's clear that that sometimes you can proceed as a matter of right. That's what the <clears throat> Bell Alta case suggests suggests uh, it's clear that you can proceed if there's an increasing the existing nonconformity that we can make a section six finding and allow it and it's also possible that the whole thing doesn't fall into 8.1.3 b at all because it's an additional nonconformity that isn't regulated and all of that is there if you just have b you don't really need any more than that uh, and so rather than trying to redo C in some better way or express it in a, in a more general way or, or write more, uh, here you can achieve the objective by writing less. And that's what the proposal does. And if I'd like Mike to weigh in if and whether or not, I, mean, I actually would like him especially to weigh in if he agrees with me, but since we can't regulate content here, uh, he, I'd like him to weigh in. Uh, whether he agrees with me or not. Great, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, so I'll see if uh, Mike Champa, our director of inspectional services could um, provide his perspective. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mike Champa, director of inspectional services. I, I do agree with Pat. Um, I, I, I agree it, it conflicts with uh, what's provided for by mass general law. Uh, I think that, um, you know, Pat understands that uh, my main concern is that this is a it's a different type of situation um, in which you know usually there's an article brought to try and and solve a specific problem um, but in this case we're just taking something out and, uh, and my only concern is, it, I mean I, I think it's I think it's nece necessary I, I, I obviously support it but I, I my concern is you know um, what it's something that you don't see what other effects it could have until they start to happen. Um, I think that uh, a lot of what what we deal with now is um, a lot of concerns that we get from residents. Um, they're fully read in on the bylaw. Um, so it, it, the you know the the question is is you know how um, how will that relate to you know, to, to our concern calls down the line. And, it, you know, I think that the, if we're in, um, I think that if our interpretations are, are matching well with the Zoning Board of Appeals, it won't end up with um, any consequence and, and it will be helpful. Um, Chairman, could I say one other thing? Uh, I don't think this is going to change the outcome in many cases. Uh, it changes the procedure and the way in which you think about it, and it changes what you, what you write in the opinion. But in general, I, I suspect that, that there are only a few cases which would be decided differently as a result of taking this out. Some probably, but not very many. Great. Thank you. I appreciate your perspective and um, will direct any questions to um, both of you that the, that the board may have as well. Um, and I'll start with uh, Ken for any questions. <clears throat> no, I don't have any questions. I am supportive of this. I think this uh, aligns with the state law. And I think it's, it's something that we're doing already. And it's, uh, it makes it uh, clearer and makes it stronger what we're doing. So I'm all set. Great. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Jean. Yeah, I agree that C has to go. I do have a question though, or two questions for Mike and or Pat. So this sets up two situations, one in which it's a non-conforming single or two family, but they're going to do something within the existing foundation walls. Therefore, it doesn't um, increase the non-conforming nature. Second one is where they're doing something that does increase the non-conforming nature, but the Board of Appeals can allow them to do it anyhow. What about a third situation in which I've got a house, it's non-conforming, but I'm going to do something outside the existing foundation walls, but it doesn't make it more non-conforming. 
Where, where do I find the answer to that in 8.1.3? Shall I say that again? Do you want me to direct that to Pat or to- Pat um, or Mike. Where do I find the answer to that in 8.1.3? Can I, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take a shot while Mike thinks about it. If I, is the thing that you're, the key thing is whether, I mean, you, if you don't extend at all the non-conforming use, the non-conforming feature, if it's just right. a change, right. then you, you can do that. Right, I mean, where does it, Pat, I agree. Where does it say that in here? If I'm a member of the public, right? And I know my house is non-conforming, I go to 8.1.3 and I look at A and it says, oh, as long as I do something within the existing foundation walls, no problem. I look at B, well, if I'm gonna increase the nonconformity, but what if I wanna do A, but it's not within the existing foundation walls? Well, the problem there is that <clears throat> it's not, prohibited in B it says no alteration reconstruction etc right, 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 right. uh, that increases the non-conforming nature right. of said structure shall be permitted that's where right. you that's where the prohibition is right, there isn't look, any other prohibition look, look at a though a says I can alter reconstruct extend structurally change as long as it's completely within the existing foundation no it doesn't say that Yes, it does. Read well, it. Let me let me try this. What it really what it says is that with all these changes, it says that is within the completely within the existing foundation right. wall does not increase the right. non-conforming right. nature of said structure. What, the meaning what? of that is only found if you look at B and you'd find that not in, increasing the non-conforming nature of said structure, uh, it means that that it's not prohibited. And so the, the basic prohibition is in B. A is simply a matter of determining what non increasing the non-conforming nature of the structure means. Okay, so let's say I'm going to alter, reconstruct, extend, or structurally change <laughs> a single or two family residential structure, but not completely within the existing foundation walls. And I'm not increasing the non-conforming nature. So for example, I'm too close to the lot line on one side, so I'm non-conforming. I am going to build out the house on the other side, but still not hit the setback, so I'm, I'm fine. So A doesn't cover me because I'm not doing something completely within the existing foundation walls. I don't have to get to B because I'm not increasing the non-conforming nature, but I don't fit into A because I'm, I'm taking a um, structure that's non-conforming and I'm not making it more non-conforming, but I'm not doing it within the existing foundation walls. So if I'm reading these bylaws, how do I know where that is since it's not an A and it's not in B? Well, there's nothing I'm that sorry, prohibits. Pat, I'm sorry. Pat, go uh, yeah, Mike Champa had his, his hand up. I'm sorry, go I, ahead. I'd like him to address this one first. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I think you kind of touched on exactly what I, um, where I was going with interpretation. I mean, that, that I think that taking out C provides more discretion. Um, but I think that... Um, if you know interpretations are important as, because there are there's a department and a board that both have discretion to provide interpretations when there is not um, when, when there is not a, a you know a specific regulation. So I, I would suggest that we could do that or I think we would be better off by replacing C, with something that says what happens in those circumstances, like a non-conforming single family or two family residence may be modified, extended, reconstructed as of right, as long as the extension modification altered structure does not increase the non-conforming nature of the structure. 
that's the piece that I think needs to be added to complete the options when you've got a non-conforming structure. So the question to Mike and Pat is, is it worth putting that in there or do we not care? Well, you would, wouldn't you also, Madam Chairman, is, is it okay yeah. if I... Sure, sure. Why don't you take that and then I'll ask Mike for his opinion. Okay, so at the very least, <clears throat> that is a little bit too broad because what what you'd have to include also is it doesn't create any new nonconformity. Mm -hmm. That's an assumption too, because it wouldn't be true. It is possible to create a new nonconformity mm -hmm. in which case you would have uh, the same problem you would have, you'd have to get a variance because you would, would be creating a nonconformity and you wouldn't right. be protected on that because it's new. Um, you know, right. I, I, all I can say is that we, we get those cases all the time and it's there, there just isn't any doubt that if you're not creating a new nonconformity and you're not increasing the nonconforming nature of this, then you can just do it. Uh, and that, that happens fair, that happens reasonably regularly. Then why do you get the cases at the ZBA if you can do it as a right? Oh, because sometimes you've got a, another kind of a problem. You've got a special, like a large edition, for example, where you're, where you're doing something in exactly the example you made, but let's say that it's a large edition, so there's a special permit is required to begin with. And the question could come up, whether you can do that because you've got a, a nonconformity on the left side, and but you're building on the right side, and the if you're okay on the right side, then just the regular rules on the special permit for a large addition it would be would apply, and there, you would need no special provision in the in the bylaw to uh, to to cover that. So, Jean, did you also want to direct that question to um, Inspector Champa? Yeah. Yes. Non-conforming is such a so. Uh, um, I I I understand where where you you know I I you know I see the the merit in 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 the wording, um, but I think that what's really um, I, I think that what what's really at issue and something that can't be solved is that uh, you know non-conforming can't really Non-conforming can't be defined. Um, it, it's it's open to interpretation from for multiple people. So I, I think that that's you know that's more in. Um, I, 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 I think that maybe in this case, as as was said, um, you know, less maybe more, and then see where you know see where that takes us. Okay, thanks. That was helpful. I appreciate it. All the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Jean, did you have other questions? No. Nope. Thank you to pose at this time. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Melissa, any questions? Uh, no questions at this time. Okay, thank you. Steve? Um, having served on the ZBA for a year and a half, I can say that nonconforming is hard <laughs> or it has a tendency to be hard. And I, I appreciated uh, the little bit in staff's memo about uh, their mention of the infamous second accept clause in chapter 40A, section six. Um, I, I think this is, I, I have one, I, I'm supportive of this. I would just make one friendly suggestion. Instead of striking C altogether and renumbering, um, I'd suggest strike leaving, you know, the uh, the number the the lettered item C, striking the text and replacing that with the word deleted, um, just so that you know. I presume there have been. I'm, I'm pretty sure we've had special permit hearings under 813C, and just you know, if someone were to look at an old special permit notice and look at the bylaw, um, you know, it. I think it would be clearer to say, you know, this section has been deleted rather than. Um, to have them look at 813D. <laughs> That's all. Great. Um, I'll uh, turn that suggestion over to Jenny because I think that that was a practice that had been addressed during recodification, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of what the preference was. Um, but I defer to, to you on that. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, Steve. We are trying to work with inspectional services to make sure that we don't quote from 
um, you know, we, we're on the same page with the bylaw, so I don't think that that should be a problem. To, to note deleted? To, no, to make it A, B, C, like right. we deleted that section and it's no longer there. You could have seen, um, yeah. Rather than say deleted. Um, I think if we did that with other parts of the bylaw, we it would end up getting confusing eventually. Since there's a lot of things in series. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions uh, from the board before we open this up for public comment? All right, uh, so at this time, uh, any member of the public wishing to speak, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. You'll have up to three minutes and please uh, begin your remarks by uh, identifying yourself with your first, last name and street address. And we will go to Chris Loretti for our first speaker. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. Can you hear me okay again? Yes, yes. Okay, thanks. Um, I guess I'm probably the only person on this call who was around at the time that that section of the bylaw was added. And it was done at the um, initiation of the then planning director, Kevin O'Brien, because what was happening is people were putting additions on um, in the required setback where there already was an addition. And the issue at that time wasn't that they were trying to go beyond uh, or more into the setback than, than previously. It was simply that they weren't, the, the belief was there that they weren't getting sufficient review by the ZBA at that time. And I believe in some cases they weren't even being referred to the ZBA, they were um, getting the permits by right. So for example, if I had say a 36 foot um, single um, story entryway on the side of my house that was in the setback, um, and wanted to make a, a six by 20 foot addition, still not going into the setback any, any further, but, but say two stories high, the building inspector was saying, well, that doesn't increase the non-conforming nature of the structure. You get a building permit by right. And the only thing I find troubling about taking C out is as Mr. Benson said, A is quite clear if you're within the existing foundation walls, you're not increasing the non-conforming nature, but what if you go outside the existing foundation wall? And, and what if you go outside in particular in a required yard setback? Does that increase the non-conforming nature of said structure? Because according to the court decision, if it doesn't, then you just get a building permit by right. And I'm concerned that if that's the way the um, um, bylaw is going to be interpreted, even when you're building into the required uh, yard setback and putting you know, 100 or 200 square foot addition on, um, I believe in those cases, the, the um, matter should be referred to the ZBA, even if it is only for a, um, a, a special permit and not a variance. So that, that's the real issue here is I think the, the, the bylaw is not clear on what constitutes um, a non an increase that, an in, a, a change that is an increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure. Um, and that's all that C was trying to address. I believe even before C came in, if you wanted to build closer to the lot line than the existing non-conformity, you were, you were pushed to get a variance. Now, I realize that the, the court case says, you know, that's not necessarily true um, under Balalta if you've got a non-conforming structure. But, but the issue of taking C out, um, while, while it may deal with that inconsistency with the state law, what it doesn't do is provide any guidance on when you've got a non-conforming or when you're increasing the non-conforming nature of the structure by building in a required yard setback. And I think this is something the ZBA needs to work with the ARB on to get that in writing in the bylaw. And I believe it's entirely consistent with state law to do that. It's not saying you need a variance. It's just saying when, um, you know, essentially it's put adding, um, you know, more detail and more clarity to what is begun in A and defining when you have, when you have increased the non-conforming nature of the structure and when you haven't. So I'll leave it at that, thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, I'll run uh, back through the members of the board and see if there are any additional um, comments or questions before we, um, before we move on, and I'll start with uh, Ken. No, I'm fine for now. Great, thank you. Jean? Uh, nothing else, thank you. Melissa? Nothing else at this point. Steve? Uh, nothing for me, Madam Chair. 
Okay, great. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Mike Champa and Pat Hamlin for your perspective on Article C. And uh, thank you, Jenny and um, uh, Kelly for preparing the memo and all of the uh, discussion points for us this evening. Uh, so with that, I would like to see if there is a, uh, a motion to close the uh, Warren Article public hearing for the uh, 2022 special town meeting. Rachel, did you close public comment? I did not. I will now close public comment. Thank you, Ken, for uh, Article C. And now I will ask if there is a motion to um, to close the uh, public hearing for 2022 special town meeting. Thank you. So motions. There are a second. Second. All right. Uh, we'll take a vote. Ken. Yes. Dean. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Uh, so thank you everyone for uh, weighing in during the public hearing process. We will um, return to these articles on, um, on uh, April 25th, when we will uh, deliberate and um, vote on each one of these three articles. That'll be in person or remote, depending on what- To be determined um, based on the select board meeting on Monday evening. And that's at 6.30? Uh, Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was 6.30. Oh, it, on the 25th, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the clarification. All right, uh, so that brings us to the end of our agen agenda this evening. Uh, any other items from the board? All right, seeing none, I will see if there is a motion to adjourn this evening. So motion. Second. Take a vote, Kim. Yes. Dean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm yes as well. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.